What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Flippin' Bats. I am still here in Japan, and this is the day three recap pod from my experience in Japan. What a day day three was. I, to be honest with you, don't even know what day it was because it's really confusing what day it is in America and out here. I think day three was Sunday. So let's talk about my day three. And it started really early, 5 a.m., meetup time so my wake up call in my room was like 4 30 basically 4 45 5 a.m to get to a bullet train where i took the bullet train from tokyo to iwate now briefly want to explain iwate because i didn't know this so a lot of you probably didn't know this iwate is basically like a state think of it as a state it is a provincial which is or a prefecture sorry i'm still learning still learning out here it's a prefecture um, so think Iwate is a state, and then the city that I was in, Hanamaki, is a, a, it's a city. So I had to learn that, but we're all learning out here. Uh, the bullet train was awesome, and I recorded an episode on the bullet train yesterday and informed everybody that this was the fastest land speed podcast in history at 150 miles an hour. Well, guess what? I lied. I was going faster. It goes about 200 miles an hour. So yesterday's day two recap podcast was brought to you at a speed of about 200 miles an hour. But I was very much so looking forward to experiencing a bullet train, and it really didn't disappoint. It's really nice. It's really fast. There's tons of leg room, which means a lot to me because I can really spread out. Uh, but it was it was really cool, and I ate breakfast on this bullet train. Let me explain breakfast real quick, quick, because this was an experience as well. We had a bag come through. Uh, the the team, one of the producers, had gotten breakfast, and the, this consisted of basically like rice cakes with salmon inside and tuna inside, which was an interesting breakfast, as well as pancakes. But but hold up a second. These pancakes were full of beans. Bean pancakes for breakfast is a thing. And um, it, so, yes, lots of rice, salmon, tuna, bean pancakes. There was egg sandwiches, but not your traditional egg sandwich. It was, um, But look, I'm here to embrace the culture, and it was actually really good. I liked my salmon and rice cake, for lack of a better term, and it was really good. But we ended up getting there. We got to the Hanamaki Station. So Hanamaki is within the prefecture of... Iwate. We get there and immediately set our sights on heading to Mizusawa Little League, which is where Shohei Otani played Little League. And man, this was this was such a cool experience. From the from the drive there, it was about I don't know about 30 minutes from the Hanamaki Station drive to Mizusawa Little League, and it was special. It was incredible. Um, Mizusawa. Where we were, Hanamaki in itself reminds me a lot of my hometown. I'm from a very small town called Goochland, Virginia. It's right in between Richmond and Charlottesville and Virginia. Very country, rural, a lot of open field, uh, a lot of crops, plants. Think of Mizusawa, Hanamaki, like that. So we get to Mizusawa Little League, and it is legitimately in between these two like highways. You, you have to pass it on a highway, and then you exit and come back and you enter through this little tunnel and you come up and you're just greeted by two incredible Little League baseball fields. And these fields are in the middle of two highways and there's a mineral field right behind it. I mean, it was so cool to see this and to really think, wow, Shohei Otani's baseball career started right here in between two highways and a mineral field and that was the first thing that hit me, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. So, yes, just to get the lay of the land, picture that. You go down through this little tunnel. You come up through the plants and the grass and the mineral field on your left. You come over a hill, and there's two all-dirt Little League baseball fields, and it was so cool to see that. But my experience there um, is something that I will remember forever. And I have probably said that a few times on this trip and to be honest with you I will probably be saying that a lot more times on this trip but the experience at Mizusawa Little League was unlike anything I have experienced before first off the field was really cool 
but it's a for a little league field it's a pretty good size but one story that I heard there from a coach on the team a guy that was actually a coach on the team when Shohei played at that little league as well apparently so there is there's a river out beyond the right field fence it's a it's a fence and then you know the right field fence then there's a bunch of grass there's some trees and then there's a river off in the distance now for a little leaguer it doesn't seem like a little leaguer would be able to hit it there well Shohei Otani even as a little leaguer guess what he used to hit balls into this river quite frequently to the point where the coach had to come up to him and say hey Shohei we need you to stop hitting balls into the river because we don't have the money to keep paying for all these baseballs so please start hitting it to the opposite field He started doing that, and now we see Shohei all the time hit really well to the opposite field, and this is kind of where it all started. He used to pull balls into the river, and because they kept losing so many baseballs and couldn't afford them, he had to start hitting balls to the opposite field, which is really cool. But, you know, these kids here at the Little League, they were practicing right there when we got there, and the experience was unbelievable. Obviously, there is a very large cultural difference. I can't talk to these kids and they can't talk to me in our native languages but we can communicate in body language and a clear respect and appreciation that we had for each other Um, these kids would take off their hats and bow and I would bow back to them and waving isn't uh, this is something I've learned waving isn't something that is done super frequently here but I would wave to these kids and they would be like oh hey and, and wave back and then we would bow to each other and uh, just the experience with these little kids there um, was pretty, it was pretty emotional. You know, they would all, they all came up to me later after. I spent a good bit of time here interacting with them, being around them, watching them practice, which was awesome to see, by the way. They're very meticulous with their practices, even at, at Little League, and was there for a little while. And after they all finished up, they would come up to me, and they got me to sign a bunch of things. I signed every kid's hat. I signed a lot of baseball gloves. I signed a lot of batting gloves. I signed a water bottle for a kid. He legitimately just brought up his water bottle, and there was a very small portion of it that was pink or a lighter color that I could sign because the rest was black. He pointed at it and had me sign his water bottle and, and then ended up getting ready to leave, got back in a van, and as we were pulling out, I had to get out of the van because they were all lining up right in front of the van and I didn't know what was happening but they all lined up and took off their hats they bowed at the same time and said something along the lines of thank you Masa's here off in the distance Masa they said thank you was that what was said in this line of the little league kids yesterday yeah they lined up took off their hats bowed and said thank you and I did the same back to them end up getting in the van and as we were getting ready to pull out um they mobbed the van mobbed it to come up and say goodbye and i can't stress this enough this isn't this isn't about mobbing me this isn't about me being a big deal this is about a a love and mutual respect of shohei otani I mentioned that there is a big cultural difference, and we obviously can't speak each other's languages, but we were speaking the language of Shohei Otani out there on that Little League field, and everybody can love and appreciate that. Certainly me, certainly those kids that are playing on the exact same field that Shohei Otani himself played on, and when I was pulling out of that place in the van, they all, even after lining up and saying thank you and and wanting my autograph and all of that stuff, they mobbed the van, I stuck my head out the van, put my hand out. They all just gave me a high five and said thank you. And it was, it was special. It was a very special moment. And it was, it was a very beautiful moment. It's a beautiful area in, in the sense of it just, you know, it's in between two highways. It's just an open field. And next thing you know, there's a bunch of kids playing Little League Baseball in between this area that you wouldn't expect to see it. And, and it was really cool. But from there, it was back in the van and off to Shohei's high school. Now the ride there was about 30 minutes and we stopped at a convenience store and what you typically don't do in the United States when you go into a convenience store is say, you know what I need? Sushi. But we did that here. Went in the convenience store, got some sushi and it was 
incredible. Every food, I tried a bunch of the food from in there. Sushi was great. They had these meatballs that were great. There were pot stickers that were really good. Um, I got a sandwich that was really good. Needless to say, I ate a lot from this convenience store and it was all really good. But then we continued our drive to the high school. And I really want to stress this just because I, I want to paint a picture because I feel like this entire journey is just me out here bringing you guys along with me. So this journey to the high school was again reminded me of home it's a one-way street a one-way road you have a field on one side fields on the other houses spread out sporadically so a bunch of plants trees it is beautiful it is a beautiful area very rural so think of it like a, a, a country area, a Midwestern area. If you know Goochland, Virginia, which most of you don't, it's kind of a lot like where I'm from, Goochland, Virginia. But we end up pulling up to this high school, Hanamaki Higashi High School in Japan, in Iwate. First thing I think of, oh my gosh, this is like a college in the United States. It was big. It is beautiful. I don't know why I'm saying was. I'm sitting here right now doing it from Hanamaki Higashi, the baseball field. This is the practice field where Shohei spent about 90% of his time. It is a massive school. You're immediately greeted by this huge building, which turns out is this multi-purpose arena, basically. There's basketball courts. They do volleyball in there. There's a baseball indoor facility in there. Uh, it's really cool, but we end up pulling in, and I couldn't see the baseball field at this point, but we start, we walk just around the corner, and I see the baseball field for the first time. This is the game stadium where all the games are played. Right now, where I'm sitting is the practice field. They spend tons of time here, but the games, they go over to the other stadium. And when I say stadium, I mean stadium. I've played in thousands and thousands of baseball games in my career from Little League to high school, which this is a high school, to college, to professional baseball. And this stadium reminded me of a minor league professional baseball stadium. It is really cool on the outside. It is a big stadium. It holds about 12,000 people, but you can't see the field by just walking up to it. All you can see is the stands and the scoreboard in the outfield. The scoreboard is massive. It is beautiful. It is really cool to see because the Japanese and Chinese characters are on it. I mean, it was just really cool to see. But then I finally walk in, and this stadium, like I mentioned from the outside, it is big. But the field itself, a full dirt infield, all dirt infield, the outfield is this beautiful, immaculate grass. It looked like you could play Augusta. It looked like Augusta in the outfield. It was awesome. And then it was just a beautiful batter's eye. The scoreboard was great. A beautiful fence. I mean, this was this wasn't a high school stadium that I have ever seen. This was a high school stadium unlike anything that I've ever seen. It is beautiful, which kind of is 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 the point here that I would like to drive home. This isn't a typical high school. Players come here specifically because of baseball and this is a well-known baseball team it's a well-known baseball town people love Hanamaki Higashi High School because of the baseball team that they put out every single year so it's a really unique area and and this high school is really unique as well but on this field um, like I mentioned it's a beautiful field the fence is pretty far it's a pretty big field so let me just set a picture here there's a fence there's a grass area behind the fence and then there's another fence behind it and then there's more grass and then there's trees so let me just set this picture before I tell the story I'm about to tell think full baseball field fence pretty far away a grass berm where people can sit another fence behind that more grass and then trees I was told and had it confirmed that Shohei Otani hit a ball over all of that and over the trees, over the trees in right center field. I asked if there was ever a ball hit anywhere close to that and was told no. I have never seen a ball hit anywhere close to as far as Shohei Otani hit that baseball. But the players were actually out there while I was there. They, act, they had a scrimmage against an, another team, and then the scrimmage ended. And as I've heard here a lot, these days are packed. 
you practice and then you play and then you practice and then you have individual practice. So I was here for the playing the game and then they broke down the game and practice afterward. This was so cool. It was the most high energy practice that I've ever been a part of. They were doing what I know as situations. So if you've played baseball, uh, you, you know about this a practice of, okay, you, you set base runners wherever you want. Let's say you put runners on first and second. There's a defense, the coach hits with a fungo, and then a runner at home plate runs. That's what they were doing. But it was so high energy. There was lots of yelling. There was lots of communication. It was very well done, by the way. I, I think I saw this happen for maybe two hours, and I didn't see more than one or two errors in, in, tr in the traditional baseball sense, an error. It just wasn't happening. They were so mechanically sound. It was so much fun to watch. So the practice was really cool as well. But one thing that I noticed while out here, there was one player that is really big and tall in stature and just a lot bigger than everybody else on the team. So I wanted to know about this guy. And who is this guy? Well, his name's Sasaki. That's his last name. And I was told that this guy, Sasaki, which I, I wanted to ask about as well because I was watching the game. This guy's approach at the plate, his swing. This is a pro approach, and there's no other way to put it. This guy's approach at the plate is professional. I was told that this guy in the last two seasons has over 70 home runs in two years. That's remarkable, and we're not looking at a field that's small. This is a massive field it's really big and this guy has over 70 home runs in two years but this high school experience was awesome I got to see this yesterday and spent a lot of time here but from here from Hanamaki Higashi High School it was off to the hotel the day was coming to an end we had shot a lot of stuff a lot of content that we keep putting out on Twitter and TikTok by the way but from here it was off to the hotel the hotel was an experience and it was an incredible one this is an old traditional Japanese style hotel it was beautiful it is very nice and I didn't know what to expect but I walk into the room this is a tatami room I didn't know what that meant a lot of you don't know what it means let me explain what it means I walk in I open the door I immediately take off my shoes because there's like a little uh, little raise so I just took off my shoes open the door look around guess what there's no bed I, I didn't know what a tatami style room was, but I was certainly shocked to not see a bed. I had no bed in my room. There was a table sitting right in the middle of the room with two chairs that lay on the ground. The chairs are on the ground with padding, and it was a very unique style floor, which is apparently a tatami style room. It was so cool. I later found out very quickly that yeah, there, there will be a bed. They come in and make the bed for you when you go down to dinner. I didn't know that, so as you can imagine, it was quite alarming to walk into a room without a bed. In hindsight, how cool. I'm in Japan, and I got to experience an old traditional Japanese-style room, a tatami room. Man, it was just so cool, but then I ended up going down to dinner, and guess what? They ended up setting up the bed. The bedding was on the floor. Really cool to see that, and uh, a really special experience. And I, I've just I've embraced the culture here, the experience, and being in a tatami style room. A tatami room was awesome. But speaking of dinner, another thing that I learned: um, everybody wore robes to dinner, and obviously I'm embracing the culture wherever I go. It's something that's important to me. I am here in Japan, and I want to embrace the culture and immerse myself in the culture as much as I possibly can. So I found the robes in my room, which I previously thought was a towel, but it was not. It is the robe. And I, you know, picked it up, found that it, in fact, is a robe, put it on. And there was a, there's a lot of different components to this. This It's a robe. It's, a, it's like a vest-style top. And there's like a, a, a tie that you, you put around your waist. So I got ready. I headed down to dinner where I met up with the rest of the team, the producers, and we went to dinner. And it was incredible. So... One, it was a very traditional dinner, as you can imagine, being in a, in a hotel, as we were. But think buffet. But when you think buffet, think gourmet, massive buffet. It was the best buffet 
I have ever had in my entire life, and it had everything you can possibly imagine. There was pasta, there was sushi, there was sashimi, there was soup, there was salad, there was rice, there were these bowls of a lot of different things. It was awesome. Dinner was an incredible experience as well. And then I went back up to my room, and guess what? While I was down there, they ended up making my bed for me. They came in the room, they put the bedding down on the tatami floor. I don't know if that's a thing. It's a tatami room. The flooring was unique. They put the, they put the bedding down on the floor, and it was great. It was incredible. I got such a great night's sleep. But before I got to sleep, we went to our first official meetup here in Japan, and it happened in Iwate, in Hanamaki, it was scheduled for 8, eight o'clock. We didn't promote this outside of that day. It was just that morning it was the first time we promoted it. It's in a very small town. As I mentioned, it's like my hometown. Um, a lot of land, a lot of open land, not a ton of people. So I didn't know what to expect. But I go to this place where our meetup was scheduled. And it was scheduled for 8 o'clock, okay? At 8.05, I arrived, and there was a bunch of people waiting there for me to show up, which I can't even, I, I struggle to say this without a smile on my face. It's so incredible. I show up to a crowd of people. At that time, there were probably about 15 people already, already there waiting. I get out, they clapped, they waved, they gave me presents. I got presents. Guys, l look, and, and by no means is this about me. This is, this is a Shohei Otani meetup that's what this is about these this is a massive Shohei Otani appreciation meetup where everybody can get together and you might not understand each other at all times your cultures might be very different but one thing that we all have in common is a love and respect and appreciation for Shohei Otani and they have made it very clear that I do that well in America and they are appreciative of that over here. So to have the response and the love and the gifts, I was given newspaper articles, I was asked to sign newspaper articles, I was given handcrafted glasswork by the person that gave it to me, um, which was beautiful by the way. One of them being a really big, like a, a pen, a glass pen, but it was so crystal clear and he handmade it just for me. It was so cool. There was a wind chime that somebody made. Um, I, I don't think the wind chime was made by the person that gave it to me, but it was beautiful. It was just a beautiful handcrafted wind chime. There were personal notes with writing um, that was in, in Japanese that I got translated and it was the coolest thing of all time. People that weren't able to be there at the time had sent flowers that were waiting for me with a note saying, thank you for what you do. I love Flippin' Bats. The Flippin' Bats community, by the way, just continues to absolutely blow me away. But the conversations I had there were special. And again, things that I will never forget. One of them, I had a guy come up to me that just said, hey, I, I just wanted to thank you and explain a little bit what's going on. People in Iwate are shy. Um, they are reserved. They don't want to go out and, and speak openly about a lot of things. And the way you speak about Shohei Otani, and he specifically mentioned how I believe he should be the most valuable player in Major League Baseball. He said, you, you're speaking for all of Iwate when you do that because these people don't want to go out and openly say that, and they're very shy to do it. When you do it, you, you're speaking for Hanamaki. You're speaking for Iwate, and we want to thank you for saying how we all feel, and it's a beautiful representation of, of Hanamaki and Iwate, and that was really cool to hear. Uh, another thing that stuck out, stood out to me, there was a, a terminally ill uh, woman that, that came 40 minutes, by the way, she drove 40 minutes just to see me. And, and a really cool part of this story is she is she's sick, and her outlook on life was down. It, wa it wasn't great, and she was sad and depressed. And Shohei Otani himself um, changed her mindset here. 